In this video, we're going to calculate the modified duration of a bond. As a reminder, the modified duration of a bond is a measure of the sensitivity of that bond to changes in interest rates. So it's a measure of exposure to interest rate risk for a particular bond. Um, in, this, uh, in this example, we've got a three-year bond that has a 6% coupon rate, $100 face value, and importantly, it pays annual coupons. The market yield for this type of bond is 4%, and so we're going to figure out what the modified duration of this bond is. So I've taken the liberty of, of writing out the modified duration formula. This is the general uh, method to calculate the modified duration, and I say it's the general method because it can handle any pattern of cash flows. So this bond or this modified duration formula is not uh, requiring that the bond is a straight bond with semi-annual coupons. So even though this is a, a simple bond, uh, I still want to draw out a timeline. Uh, with a $100 face value and a 6% annual coupon rate, the first two years of this bond's life, we're going to receive a $6 coupon. In that final year, that third year, when the bond be, uh, matures, we're going to receive the $100 in face value, we're going to receive that back, and we're also going to get that final coupon payment. So to calculate the, the modified duration of this bond, we need to calculate the price, and we're going to need to calculate this quantity right here. I like to tackle these kind of, of problems uh, using a table. I think it organizes the calculations and, well, it's what I'm going to show you. So the table for that I like to set up has a column for the year. This bond has a three-year maturity, so there's, well, only three years. And then there's a cash flow associated with this bond in each one of those years. So in that first year, we receive $6. The second year, we receive $6. And in that third year, we also receive the $6 coupon, but we also get the additional $100 in face value back. The next column I like to do is I like to discount each one of these cash flows back to today. So that first $6 cash flow, we discount it back one period at that 4% rate. We do that for the second cash flow of $6, and we discount it back two periods. And then that final cash flow of $106, we discount it back three periods. With this, we get uh, 5.77, 5. well, 5.55, and then 94.23. The final column in this table is this column of T times the present value of the cash flows that we receive at time T. Uh, the reason I'm calculating this is because what I am doing is I'm calculating this entire quantity right there. Um, and then we're going to sum over all the time periods. So for that first cash flow that happens in year one, I multiply the time which we receive that cash flow, which is one year out, times the present value of that, being 5.77, and not surprisingly, 1 times 5.77 is equal to 5.77. I do this for the second cash flow, um, except T now is 2. So I multiply 2 times the present value of that second cash flow, which is 5.55, and get 11.10. Same thing for the cash flow that we receive at year 3, and get a, a final of 282.69. The reason I like to set up the these type of problems in a table is because now we can very easily calculate price and then use that to calculate the modified duration. So based off the numbers in this table, we can find the price by simply adding up the present value of all the cash flows. Um, as a reminder, that is that column. So we sum up the, the 5.77, the 5.55, and the 94.23. Um, so the price of this bond is $105.55.
We know this bond is trading at a premium because market yields for this type of bond are 4%, but this is a 6% coupon rate bond. So it is trading at a premium. The next um, uh, sort of part of the modified duration formula that we need to calculate is this T times the, the cash flow we receive at time T discounted back to today. Well, we've calculated everything right here in this column over there. So all we have to do is sum up uh, all the numbers for each one of the years. So we have to sum over time. So the, the 5.77, I'm getting it from right here. The 11.10, getting it from right here. And then that 282.69, I'm snagging it from right there. When we add all these up, we get 2.9956. So now we just have to put all these uh, these numbers into the modified duration formula. So we've got one over the price, which we calculated right here. We have one over the current, or one plus the current market yield, which is 4%. And then we multiply it by this 299.56. When we plug all that stuff in our calculator, we get a modified duration of 2.73. So just to reiterate, what I did in this problem, or this example, is I first drew out a timeline. Then I set up this table that has year, has the cash flow that we receive at each period, take the present value of each one of those cash flows, and then I multiply uh, the, the present value of that cash flow by how many periods out in the future we receive that cash flow. With all this information, I can easily find the price by summing over all the present values of those cash flows. I can find this quantity by adding up everything in that column and then plugging this stuff into the, the modified duration formula. I can actually find the modified duration. And just as a reminder that the modified duration is a measure of sensitivity to interest rate changes. Therefore, it's a measure of exposure of a bond to interest rate risk.